Welcome back to Beast Beneath Time, where ancient nightmares claw their way out of the fossil record to haunt your imagination. Today we're dragging 10 horrific beasts out of extinction. Creatures so monstrous, so deeply unsettling, that if they still walk the earth today, we'd be living in a permanent survival horror game. Forget Hollywood monsters. Nature already made them. Bigger, meaner, and far more real. Let's dive in. First up, we have Arthropleura, the Titan Centipede. Imagine walking through a prehistoric jungle. The air is thick. The canopy above is choking out the light, and suddenly, you hear it. Not a roar, not a hiss, but something worse. Skittering. Heavy, armored, unnatural. That was Arthropleura, a nightmare that slithered across the forest floor over 300 million years ago. It wasn't a bug, it was a tank with legs. Arthropleura looked like a centipede straight from hell. It stretched up to 8.5 feet long, its body composed of thick plated segments, with dozens of legs powering it forward like a centipede engineered for war. And unlike modern creepy crawlies, this one wasn't hiding under logs, it was the log. Now here's the kicker. It wasn't even a predator. It was a detritivore, feeding off decaying matter. But it didn't matter. It didn't need venom or claws to be horrifying. Its size alone could trample anything in its path. If Arthropleura were alive today, forests would be no-go zones. Imagine camping and finding a centipede longer than your tent crawling past. That's not wilderness. That's a horror movie. Next up, we have Jacolopterus the sea scorpion. We've all heard of giant squids or great white sharks, but let me introduce you to something older and arguably more terrifying. Jacolopterus, the original king of nightmare fuel. This thing lived over 400 million years ago. It wasn't a fish. It wasn't even a true scorpion. It was an arthropod of death. A sea scorpion stretching over eight feet long, with pincers as long as your arms and eyes adapted to strike in low light. It didn't stalk prey. It ambushed it, hiding in silty water, then exploding out to snatch armored fish with those jagged claws. Picture swimming in what looks like a peaceful lake, and suddenly a car-sized scorpion pulls you under. Yeah. Jacolopterus is why prehistoric oceans are better left in the past. Next up, we have Titanoboa, the world's largest snake. After the dinosaurs tapped out, the snakes took over, and none did it with more nightmarish flair than Titanoboa. This thing wasn't just a big snake, it was the biggest snake to ever live. Up to 50 feet long and over a ton in weight. Its body was thicker than a grown man's torso. It hunted giant crocodiles and left no survivors. It didn't strike like modern vipers. It didn't need to. Titanoboa would silently glide through steaming Palocene swamps, wrap itself around its prey and crush. Bones shattered, organs liquefied, and the swamp was quiet again. If this thing existed today, You'd need more than beware of alligator signs. You'd need military-grade fences around every bayou. And forget swimming holes. Next up, we have Megalodon, the ultimate apex predator. You've heard the name, but most people don't really grasp how terrifying it was. Let's get something straight. Megalodon wasn't just a big shark. It was a leviathan, an evolutionary accident in the best possible way, if you're not its prey. This beast stretched up to 70 feet long. It weighed over 60 tons. And its mouth? Big enough to swallow a car. Its teeth? Serrated triangular razor blades the size of your hand. What did it eat? other whales. It hunted them, smashed their rib cages with bone-crushing force, and tore them apart in deep 
echoing silence. If Megalodon swam today's oceans, cruise ships would need shark armor, submarines would be prey, and you'd never see another shallow ocean scene in a movie ever again. Next, say hello to Andrew Sarkis, an apex predator wrapped in the body of a twisted prehistoric pig-bear hybrid. No tusks, no tail, just raw predatory rage on four legs. Over 13 feet long and six feet tall at the shoulder, this thing was all bone and aggression. Its skull alone measured over three feet. It likely had the strongest bite of any land mammal of its era, able to crunch bone, shell, and probably your dreams. It wasn't elegant. It wasn't stealthy. It was a walking death sentence, likely scavenging and hunting across the barren plains. If it roamed modern Earth, you wouldn't be jogging in Mongolia. You'd be boarding up your windows and hoping it didn't smell your dog. Next up, we have Dinosuchus, the terror crocodile. Modern crocodiles are scary. Dinosuchus makes them look like toys. Dinosuchus didn't just share its habitat with dinosaurs, it ate them. Full-grown hadrosaurs and juvenile tyrannosaurs weren't safe near the water. This ancient croc stretched up to 35 feet long. That's longer than a bus. Its jaws, capable of generating over 20,000 pounds of force, stronger than a T-Rex. Unlike modern crocs that mostly lurk near water edges, Dinosuchus likely patrolled river systems, looking for anything foolish enough to drink. Imagine if this thing existed now. You couldn't kayak. You couldn't fish. You'd think twice before stepping near water. And forget Florida. It'd be gone. Next up, Pulmono Scorpius, the giant scorpion of doom. Prehistoric scorpions didn't skitter under rocks. They owned the land. If you think bug spray would help you here, you'd be wrong. You'd need to be equipped with a full-fledged machine gun to stand a chance. Three feet long, armored, venomous, and it hunted on land. Unlike today's scorpions that hide, this one likely stalked prey across the forest floor. Its claws could tear into soft flesh. Its tail, laced with neurotoxins. And it lived in a time when oxygen levels were high enough to allow invertebrates to supersize. If it existed today, you'd need steel-toed boots and riot shields just to go camping. There's a reason nature shrunk these beasts down, and thank God for that. Next up, Thylacolio the marsupial lion. Australia's extinct apex predator and possibly the most terrifying mammal to ever leap from a tree. Australia already sucks enough in the current day with all their terrifying wildlife, but Thylacolio makes funnel-web spiders look like pets. This predator was as big as a leopard, but stockier and stronger. It had shearing teeth that functioned like scissors, cutting straight through flesh and bone. What made it truly terrifying? It could climb. Paleontologists believe it hunted from trees, waiting to leap down like a silent marsupial assassin. Today, it would dominate the outback. You wouldn't walk trails without a gun and a spotter in the trees. Next up, meet Laviatin melvillii, the sperm whale's demonic cousin, named after the biblical Leviathan and Herman Melville, author of Moby Dick. Fitting, because this creature was Moby Dick's evil twin. Think Moby Dick, but with a killer whale's personality and a megalodon's taste in snacks. At over 60 feet long, Laviatin didn't use sonar to hunt squid like modern sperm whales. It had foot-long teeth in both jaws, and it actively hunted other whales. It didn't echolocate prey, it tracked it. It tore through flesh and left blood in its wake, and it didn't fear anything, not even Megalodon. If it swam today's oceans, the deep sea would be off limits. Entire pods of whales would vanish, and you'd think twice before boarding a sub. 
and finally meet Gorgonops, the saber-skulled reptile. Before dinosaurs, there were Gorgonopsians, and the king of that gang was Gorgonops. It wasn't a dinosaur. It wasn't a mammal. It was a reptile-like killer with saber teeth and the cold-blooded instincts of a lizard. It moved with the speed of a wolf and bit like a croc. Its saber teeth were designed to pierce armor. Its body was built for sprinting and it hunted in the shadow of extinction. Ruthless, unrelenting, alive today, Gorgonops would be your worst nightmare in any desert, agile, silent, and ancient. These monsters once ruled Earth and thank whatever gods you believe in that they're gone. But extinction isn't the same as erasure. Their bones whisper through time, warning us that nature has always had teeth. If you enjoyed this descent into prehistory's darkest corners, hit subscribe, leave a comment with your favorite beast, and tell us what creature you never want to see resurrected. Until next time, stay curious and stay cautious, because some nightmares are buried for a reason, and we'll catch you in the next one on Beasts Beneath Time.